Have you ever considered buying a used, maybe an older BMW? Well, I've got a couple myself, and I've also learned the hard way that they aren't necessarily the best buy. As a matter of fact, if I can be so bold, I would suggest you not buy an older used BMW unless you're a real enthusiast. Let's get into it right now. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Mark with Exotic Car Play Place. And BMWs, when they're new, are absolutely phenomenal vehicles. They have the latest in innovation technology. They have some of the best performing cars on the market and they're very, very attractive and stylish. So it's very easy to understand why people want to buy them. But as they get older, they become more troublesome. They don't run quite the way they did when they were new, and honestly, they get very, very expensive. Basically, I've got 13 reasons you don't want to buy an older used BMW. There are exceptions, however. If you are a true enthusiast, like myself, you don't mind putting in the extra time, effort, and dollars to keep that vehicle on the road because it has something unique special and no longer replicated by something in the newer lineups. Stick around to the very end. I'm going to give you a few examples of some cars that are maybe worth buying as older versions of the BMW brand. So the first reason you don't want to buy an older used BMW. What we have here is an X6 has the 50i. So this is basically the twin turbo V8. Lots of great power, lots of great technology. You know this will get very expensive when it starts to wear out turbos, proper cooling, proper oiling. It needs all of that and it needs a lot of maintenance. But can you imagine even the older BMWs, some of the really old ones, if we go back to the E30 generations, some of the older cars needed valve adjustments, cooling system repairs and replacements, regular oil changes. As you can probably appreciate, a lot of these cars have had numerous owners. If you go and buy a 10 or 15 year old BMW, chances are it's been through at least a handful of different owners. And the problem with that is, Every owner, they start driving it for a couple years, they realize, oh, this is too expensive, poof, kick it to the curb, and then the next guy gets the hassles. Unfortunately, that seems to be the cycle because they know that parts and labor cost a lot of money. It's non-enthusiasts and ultimately the lack of maintenance, so just not understanding the maintenance requirements that make these cars very unreliable and why you don't want to buy a generic old school BMW. So the second reason you don't want to buy an older used BMW is because of a sea of junk. It doesn't take very long to start sifting through the classifieds and realize that there's so many different models to choose from. X-Series, M cars, SUVs and sedans and sport coupes and convertibles. Lots of different variations, lots of different engine styles. V8s, twin turbos, V8s naturally aspirated, inline six cylinder engines, four cylinder engines. It's all just confusing and I just don't know where to start. So unless you're a real enthusiast and you know exactly what you're going to buy and the problem pitfalls with that particular model, you might wind up buying yourself a lemon. And if you walk in blindly, there's a good chance you might just take it in the you know what. So that's the next reason you don't necessarily want to buy an older used BMW. So the third reason you don't necessarily want to buy an older used BMW, for example, if your primary intention is to daily drive it. I personally experienced the wrath and the pain and the burn of buying an older used BMW. A lot of you guys know I had a 2007 BMW 335 with the N54 engine. I daily drove it. Great car to drive every day until it's time to fix it every other week. It seemed like just about every week I was changing parts. I had to do water pumps, thermostats, radiator, all kinds of coolant hoses. I also had leaks from the oil filter housing gasket and everywhere else you can possibly imagine. Even before I bought the car, the previous owner had just done the high pressure fuel pump upgrade and the fuel injectors. So the cars are notorious for problems, and as you start tacking on the miles on some of these older BMWs, guaranteed to start catching up with you. So avoid those used BMWs if you plan on daily driving it. So the next reason you don't want to necessarily buy an older used BMW, here's a great example. We have an actual late model 750Li right here. Asking $34,995. So yes, it's a $100,000 car now that is only worth about a third of its original value. So what's the point of that? The point is, it doesn't matter how cheap you get the used BMW, the cost for servicing continually escalate. The service shops don't get any cheaper. Their hourly rate keeps climbing and we're probably $370 an hour for BMW service rates. Parts continue to get more and more expensive. And of course, just because you can get the car for $10,000 today, doesn't mean that all the parts and servicing are commensurate of that. No, not at all. In fact, it's still gonna cost you like a rock star just to maintain that car. So at the end of the day, that's another key reason you don't necessarily want to buy an older used BMW unless you're a true enthusiast is because the costs are still in line with a brand new car. So the next reason you don't necessarily want to buy an older used BMW like this one right here has to do with the fact that if it's got miles on it, significant miles in age, the car is deteriorated. We all know that these cars are often built to very tight tolerances, far more tight tolerances than you'd find in a lot of domestic products and they're designed to run optimally 
with those tolerances. Unfortunately, as they wear out, suspension gets weak, steering racks get loose, you get loose suspension bushings, you get loose everything. The car no longer handles like it did when it was brand new. And even if you read all the statistics in the magazines and get all excited about what that car was 15 years ago, sadly, buying a 15-year-old BMW will no longer drive like the Road & Track magazine did way back in the day. So the next reason you probably don't necessarily want to buy an older used BMW is because there's such amazing choices and selections here. Now, you can lease, you can buy, finance, even if you have some cash, you can buy these great new cars. They have the latest safety features, the latest technology performance. I mean, why would you want 150 horsepower 3 Series when you can step into something like this with 550 horsepower? It just seems to make more sense. It always boils down to dollars and cents. Some people, you can get into a lease that can make their monthly payments affordable. I personally think financing is a better way to go, but regardless, there's always options. And if you do a little bit of research online, you'll quickly find out that there's a lot of people that will start to spill the beans on what are the typical failures. So if you incorporate what you can predict as some of the failures along the line, it might just make more financial sense to get into a newer model that you still have some warranty and do it through either a lease or a finance. BMW, break my wallet. That's right, I'm sure you've all heard that before. It's been utilized over and over again. Why? Because there's a lot of problem cars and you just need to understand why that term is. For example, you get in the four cylinders, the old N20, they had a lot of problems with timing chain issues. You move into some of the six cylinder cars and they have coolant leaks galore. And then you get into the V8 cars here because they have problems with oil consumption, timing chain issues. There's a lot of problems. Doesn't matter which generation of car, there seems to be something that you have to deal with. So at the end of the day, if you get yourself into a new enough vehicle with some warranty, the term break my wallet don't ne doesn't necessarily apply because the dealer will often pick up the costs. If you get into an older used BMW, and if you can't wrench on the car yourself, be prepared to pay through the nose for some of those repairs. That's right, these cars will be very, very expensive in about six or seven years time, as is any other current 15, 20 year BMW. Trust me, I know, I had that N54 powered 335i. Everything that could fail, did fail. And trust me, they have a limited lifespan and an actual engineered life associated with them. So another issue in buying some of the older used BMWs is what we see over here, and it's a 3 Series BMW. Now they're great cars, they're a lot more fun than driving a Toyota or a Honda, and even better than a Lexus to drive, 100%. And I will give that to you every time. For an enthusiast, these are the cars you wanna drive. But unfortunately, the downside is, after these cars, like I sp spoke about earlier, hit about 10, 12, 15 years of age, they've gone through numerous owners. And a lot of the owners are enthusiastic young buyers. Unfortunately, a lot of those young buyers buy these cars, don't do all the right maintenance, they drive the wheels off them, and what you have left is a real problem child. They get neglected, they get abused, and sadly, if you're the next guy in line that buys your 16-year-old E90 BMW, you're gonna pay the piper for that. So unfortunately, the next reason why an older BMW could be a real problem for you is the cost-cutting measures that BMW has taken over the years. Where they were able to manage to save five, 10, 20, maybe $50 per vehicle, Unfortunately now, 10 years, 15 years later, you or me are feeling the burn. Why? Because all the cost cutting measures associated with the extensive use of plastics under the hood results in lots of cracked fittings, broken water pumps, thermostats, cooling lines that split or come apart, and they leak. That's a common known issue. BMWs without leaks? The only way they don't leak is essentially either if they're brand new or if there's no fluid behind the lines. Unfortunately, another reason you don't want to buy an older used BMW is, did you realize BMW leads the pack in terms of vehicles off the road within four to eight years? That's right. Why? Because the sheer cost of repairs and maintenance or bringing them back to a serviceable condition means that a lot of them get trashed very, very early on in their life. I mean, there's so many well-documented issues. We talk about the N54 twin turbo engine that I had in my 335. Everything from wastegate rattle, coolant leaks from the water pump, thermostat, radiator, cooling lines. You have oil leaks from valve cover gaskets, oil pan gaskets, turbo issues, fuel injectors, high pressure fuel pump. The list goes on. I could keep going on and on and they're all well documented issues. How about the S85? That's a V10. Beautiful engine, but it has a lot of issues from throttle actuators to rod bearings to Vanos problems, SMG pumps and a whole host of other issues. Now those cars are exceptionally well to drive, 
but you do have to understand that there's lots of documented history. Virtually every inline six cylinder engine has some kind of leak coolant leaking issue. How about the V8 engines? Like you often see in these kind of vehicles, these have issues with timing chains, battery draws, they have twin turbos cooking the V of the engine, resulting in excessive oil consumption, specifically the older vehicles. These newer ones are a little better shielded, but the older N63 engines have those problems. There's lots of well-documented issues all over the internet. So realistically, there's so many documented issues that you really don't want to have an older used BMW unless you really need to have that model. So the next reason you don't necessarily want to get into an older BMW is when they're new like this, they're great. They're absolutely wonderful and warranty covers you and you're good to go. The problem is when they get older, they need lots of service. They need lots of love. They need lots of repairs and the parts start to add up. Did you realize where BMW makes most of their money isn't from the sale of the vehicle, it's from service and from parts. And a big reason that the BMW dealers are able to build these big fancy shops is because of parts. It's not about the sale of the vehicle brand new, it's literally because the service and of course the parts that have to get replaced later on. Parts, parts, parts. And sadly, it almost seems like it's engineered that way. In a lot of ways, when you think about it, you're paying a lot of money for a plastic cooling line or a plastic thermostat or a plastic rad piece. They have a guaranteed engineered life and they won't last forever. They might get last five or six years or about 100,000 kilometers and you'll be doing it all over again. It's an engineered design to replace parts. Now, unfortunately, the way these cars are designed, they're a ticking time bomb. Ask any E60 M5 owner with rod bearings how they're just living on borrowed time. How about timing chains on N20 engines? How about valve guide seals on the N63 engine? One could make an argument that it's essentially like a brief briefcase where the bomb diffuser is trying to open it and cut the right wire to stop that clock from ticking. Sadly, there's no way to stop this, this time bomb from ticking with the BMW, it's just a matter of paying the piper and being ready for it when it decides to explode. Yet another issue really is not unique and a lot of brands face the same problem. It's just because of the sheer complexity of a lot of these vehicles, it's electrical problems. No shortage of electrical issues. There's lots of modules, there's lots of controls, computers and wiring from end to end. There's thousands of miles of wire in a vehicle. The more complex the car, the more the likeliness. And we're not talking about even modules, even simple things a relay for a power window or power window actually failing. And it's somewhat electrical or it's just somewhat related to electrical. For example, power windows that drop off the rails, lots of little different weird things that can actually fail on these, but electrical gremlins are high on the list. Now there are some cars that actually somewhat defy this, or if they don't defy it, they actually justify it. For you and me, if you wanna buy an older BMW, they're not all trash. There's actually some great ones that you do consider buying. I'll give you an example, the E30 M3. A lot of you guys have probably heard about that. Exceptional vehicle to buy, very simplistic. And as a result, people have been starting to snatch those up. If you happen to be a lucky owner of an E30 M3, hold on to it. There have been some astronomical trade values on some of those cars lately. So regardless of what needs to be fixed on it, you fix it just because the sheer value of the car. Another car that's worth it, in my opinion, would be an E90 or E92 M3. They've actually hit rock bottom. The values are low right now, and they are kind of expensive to fix. But I do see that trending upwards. We'll also talk about the E46 M3. Lots of great value there. They also hit rock bottom. There are some problem areas. I would suggest try to get the manual version. They're starting to catch on. The trend is coming back and they're starting to gain a little popularity. The E36 M3 as well. If you find a couple good version, if you find good versions in either of those, they're worth holding on to. Always better to go with the manual, although I wouldn't necessarily say it's a broken deal if it's an if it's an SMG and the E46. Those are great cars that might be worth putting some money into if you happen to hold on to one. Another vehicle I would suggest is the E39 M5. There's guaranteed, doesn't matter. If things start to wear on that, fix them. Those cars are becoming legendary status, as well as the E60 M5. Literally the last of the naturally aspirated high strong engines that you'll find from BMW. They will no longer do that again. Now it's everything's turbocharged. The E60 M5 with the naturally aspirated F1 inspired V10 engine, will be like nothing else out there. Yes, it can bankrupt you. It's very expensive engine to repair. Where else can you find a car that will do over 200 miles per hour in a four-door sedan? There are very, very select few cars that can actually do that or lay claim to that. But that car would definitely be worth putting in the garage 
for the time when the values start to skyrocket. I don't see them going anywhere else but that. And as a result, any of these vehicles I just mentioned might be worth holding onto for their own merit. Other than that, unless you're a glutton for punishment, I would stick to something a little bit newer. With all of that said, everyone, thanks for joining in on this day. It's been great to have you. If you want to learn more about the BMW versus Lexus reliability debate, be sure to click right there. It's really going to help walk you through it and give you some great examples of cars that you definitely shouldn't buy. I really hope to see you guys on the next one. Catch you then. Bye-bye.